and happy Easter. Today I'm going to be making a Dollar Tree Easter dinner. This is going to be using ingredients that are all from the Dollar Tree. And yes, I know that ham and potatoes and eggs and many traditional Easter dinner ingredients are on sale this week at traditional grocery stores for great prices. I like to do these videos showcasing Dollar Tree ingredients because not everyone has access to traditional grocery stores or if they do, sometimes those grocery stores are outside the budgets of what people can afford. I'm very fortunate that I live in an area with a low cost of living with lots of grocery stores around and things are very affordable but at other times in my life I have lived places where there were not a lot of grocery stores nearby and if there was a traditional grocery store it was really really expensive. So that's why I like to do these Dollar Tree videos and it's not saying that Dollar Tree is the best place to buy groceries or the cheapest or you know necessarily any particular thing. I just like to show what you can do with a limited variety of ingredients. So with that being said, let me show you what I got. I bought $10 of ingredients for this dinner or eight items. And the crispy jalapenos were the basis of my inspiration for this dish. So I'm gonna be making kind of a play on a green bean casserole. It's gonna be a ham and potato and green bean casserole. So what I have here are this instant brown gravy mix, the bag of crispy jalapenos that I mentioned, a bag of frozen seasoning blend, that's onion, celery, and peppers, a can of nacho cheese sauce, a can of green beans, a can of potatoes, a can of luncheon loaf. It's basically like a spam knockoff. And then a container of Dollar Tree's shelf stable milk. I think this is one of the best things that they sell. I love this stuff. So great to keep one of these in the cupboard in case you have a recipe that involves milk and you realize you don't have any in your fridge. The first ingredient I'm gonna tackle is this luncheon loaf. It was the closest thing my Dollar Tree had right now to ham. And there's been times in the past where they have had actual slices of ham, but I haven't seen them in a while. The refrigerated sections at the Dollar Tree, any of the Dollar Trees near me, have been a bit sparse the last six to 12 months. They used to always carry milk, eggs, different cheeses, uh, several different refrigerated meats like ham, like slices of ham and turkey and that kind of thing. All they had today were chicken-based hot dogs, and so I figured this would be more fun to try. Admittedly, the pork plasma ingredient uh, turned me off from this item in the past. After doing a little bit of research, I am less intimidated by it. And I am also a lover of scrapple, which is a, another loaf-like pork food that utilizes as much of the pig as possible. So, you know, I'm kind of already used to ingredients like that. <laughs> so anyway, if you've never opened a can like this before, it may be a little confusing, but it's it's pretty uh, simple and cl clever. Other than I have no nails to get this off. Hold on. And we're back. Andrew to the rescue. So it comes with this little key-like opener. And this just slides onto this little tab. And you turn. and it just rolls around and peels. It's very clever, I like it. And this is a really, uh, cans like this are nice to have in like an emergency kit or something because you don't have to worry about whether you have a can opener or not. Hmm. Before I add this into the casserole, I want it to fry it up a little bit and give it a little bit of color. So I'm gonna cut it into slices. I've got a pan heating up. There we go. Now, uh, it's got a fair bit of fat, so I'm gonna try cooking these without adding any oil. So spoiler alert, I probably should have uh, cooked them in some oil. I was hoping I could just cook them like I do scrapple. And you know, maybe, because usually I cook scrapple in my regular cast iron, so maybe that would have worked better too, but these did stick a lot. But honestly, I think as long as all the parts that stuck end up in the final dish, like the little crispy bits that are ending up on the bottom of the pan, I think that'll work out fine too. I feel like spam and canned meats get a reputation as something that poor people eat a lot. And I know a lot of people who, you know, grew up in poverty and did eat a lot of canned meats. 
I didn't have that experience. I ate a lot of hot dogs. For my household, hot dogs were much cheaper than canned meats. All right, I think these have more or less achieved what I was hoping for. So I'm gonna get them out of the pan. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this seasoning blend in the pan. I'm assuming that all of uh, the moisture in this will help lift off these like stuck on bits and it'll all get integrated. Since they're frozen, initially it's really cooling down the pan, uh, but as soon as that heats back up and it gets all hot, these will saute very nicely. These are going to add lots of really delicious flavor to the dish. By the way, to my friends who uh, celebrated Passover this week, I just wanted to say happy Passover. I had the pleasure of attending a friend's Seder. I found the afikoman. I'm pretty proud of myself about that one. Don't worry, there were no children involved. It was all adults, so I didn't I didn't steal it from I didn't steal it from the kids. <laughs> uh, you can see that everything did lift right off the pan with these veggies, and I'm just gonna let these cook for a couple more minutes. I'm happy with where the veggies are, and they're starting to stick, so we're gonna move on. I've got one of these packs of gravy. I just added a cup of cold water to my pan. Get that mixed in real quick so it doesn't clump. So let me tell you why I chose to use the gravy. So I'm not a huge fan of the kind of classic, simple green bean casserole recipe with the uh, cans of mushroom soup and I can't even remember what other ingredients now. I do love, like I just discovered that I actually love green bean casserole this year, uh, but I make it with a roux. I didn't wanna buy oil and flour for this meal. I wanted to try to make do without them. And so I thought that the gravy was a good kind of shortcut for that. And broth, I would've had to buy oil, flour, and broth. It's a little bit different than the oil flour broth combination, but shouldn't be too terribly far off. And it actually might be some really nice flavor. That's thickening up really quick. So I'm gonna add a cup of my milk. I feel like there's probably other utensils I have other than uh, this spatula at this point that would probably be better suited to this. This is starting to get hot and bubbly, so I'm gonna give it a taste real quick. See what that milk and gravy combo is like. It's pretty good. It's slightly bland. I haven't added any kind of seasoning or anything to it. I'm seeing if I can get away without adding anything. What I'm adding now is that paste nacho cheese sauce. I really like adding like a pepper jack cheese to my green bean casserole. There weren't a lot of cheese options this time around at the Dollar Tree. I chose this cheese because it is a spicy cheese and because it's one of the best cheese products they have. Like this is actually a cheese versus, I mean, it's very processed cheese obviously, but it is a cheese versus some of their other similar canned cheeses are more oil-based than dairy-based. I'll give this a taste, see if I wanna add any more cheese. Mm, yeah, that added a lot of flavor. I think I'll add just a little bit more. I'll have some leftover that I'll put in another container and put in the fridge. Um, I guarantee that we can find ways to use leftover nacho cheese sauce. I opened and drained my green beans. Yeah, I didn't even start preheating my uh, oven yet. I'm starting that preheating to 425. I didn't start it yet because I didn't want to start it too early, but this will probably be ready to go in before it's actually preheated. That's all right. I'm also gonna get my potatoes added. I thought I was gonna have to chop them up a little bit, but then I realized they're diced. We're just gonna pretend that that was absolutely an intentional decision to buy potatoes that were already diced. All right, I'm switching this out. It's not like this silicone spatula is particularly hard to clean. So let's just make my life easier and make it easier to stir this up. My oven is almost preheated. Go ahead and get my meat in there as well. You can see I chopped it up. So what will y'all be eating on Easter itself? 
Easter isn't a holiday that I usually travel to visit any, any family for. Usually it's just me, my mom, and Andrew. We don't really have like a traditional meal that we make. We kind of just make whatever sounds good to us. Sometimes it's something super simple. Sometimes it's something a little more extravagant. I'm actually making a turkey this year, but that's not really so much about it being Easter as much as I've been cleaning out my freezer. I'll have another video on more of the meals that I made with that soon. Uh, but I have a turkey that I bought last year that I wanna go ahead and use up. I bought another turkey this year to have as my like backup turkey, my freezer turkey. But so I'll probably uh, make that turkey and it's, gosh, it's like a 19 pound turkey. So I'll probably uh, extend an open invitation for all of my friends who aren't doing anything on Easter, aren't visiting family or anything. Easter's a hard one because I know I, I've never even working a government job I didn't have Monday after Easter off. So it was really, really hard to visit anyone when most of my family lives seven hours away. So this is those crispy jalapenos. I'm mixing those in. Basically, I'm mixing these in as if they were onion crisps. I had a viewer send me the Trader Joe's version of these and I probably never would have tried them, but they were so good, won me over instantly. So when I saw that the Dollar Tree started carrying them, I absolutely 100% bought them there. Very, very delicious. So mixing in a little over half and putting the rest on top. All right, as you probably heard, my oven is preheated. I'm gonna put this in the oven for like 15 minutes. I hadn't planned at all to make a dessert. I was just gonna make the dinner. And then I very impulsively, while I was at Dollar Tree, just suddenly decided I want a cake. But the Dollar Tree didn't have eggs. I didn't wanna buy oil. So I decided to make the kind of cake where you just add in some soda with the cake mix and that's all you need. There are all kinds of combinations you can do, different flavors of soda, flavors of cake, things like that. But I really love a yellow cake with some chocolate frosting. So I decided that that's what I was gonna do. And Andrew and I really love Sprite. We don't buy it very often. And I bought this big old one and a quarter liter because it was the same exact price as a can of Sprite would have been. So I'll just measure out 12 ounces of this. But yeah, uh, I had stopped drinking soda a while back and it usually just doesn't really taste right to me. And Andrew just has, you know, never been like a, he's, an, he's always been an occasional soda drinker. Sprite is one that we both really like, at least in, in small amounts. We'll buy a bottle just a few times a year, and usually by the time we're done with the bottle, we're, we've had our fill for a while. So this is 12 ounces of Sprite in with my cake mix. Stir, stir, stir. You want to get it fully mixed in, but you don't want to overmix it. I've got my pan ready with liners. Uh, my batter is mixed. I just pulled my casserole out of the oven. How many of these I got? Three, six, nine, eleven. So I have these chocolate peanut butter eggs. I swear when I was there the other day, they had bigger packs of like smaller ones, like just like the round eggs, and that's what I wanted. But when I went to pick up all of this stuff, these were the only ones they had, and this was actually the only pack they had. Get some batter. In the cup. Drop an egg on in there. And then cover it up. I might actually break these in half. They're a little bit big. By the way, cupcake liners are one of those things that I don't technically need, but I absolutely swear by. I don't mind cleaning up a little bit of batter that ends up on the top of the pan, but man, I hate cleaning up the little inside edges. Of the individual cups when you have cupcakes that stick 
So I have this like absolutely massive collection of all kinds of cupcake liners that I would buy back when we used to have Kroger around here. Like, cause after the holidays, they would get marked down to like 10 cents or a quarter each. And I probably have like a stash of hundreds of cupcake liners, have not had to buy any in years. All right, I have 18 cupcakes. I broke the chocolate into just enough pieces to fit into them all. Some of these are filled up a little more than I like, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna put these in the oven, which I have at 350 for 20 minutes, and then I'll check on them. Here is the finished casserole out of the oven. Andrew came out and said that it smelled amazing. I'm pretty excited to get into this. This is ready to serve up, get on some plates and eat. Look at these absolutely gorgeous bowls that one of my subscribers, Francine, sent me. Like, they're so gorgeous. I was so surprised when I opened the box and I love these. There's six of them. They're so beautiful. Andrew was like, dibs on the orange one. So he's a fan as well. <laughs> Let me see if I can get away with using the spatula to serve this. Oh yeah, I think that'll work fine. Right, before we go sit down and eat this, I figured we would give you our opinion on it. Mm. Cheesy, salty goodness. I like the beans. Which beans? Oh, green, green beans. beans. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, that would honestly be my only complaint is that it's like a higher sodium meal than mm -hmm. I usually make just because, I mean, that just was the nature of so many of the ingredients. But flavors are really good. If I could add anything, I think, you know, besides, for, uh, you know, fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. Maybe some garlic powder. I can see that. If you could add any ingredient, it doesn't have to be a seasoning. What would you add? It doesn't have to be a seasoning. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's got the... I wonder if instead of the potatoes, if you had like egg noodles, it'd be like a, reminds me of like a tuna casserole kind of thing. That'd be a really good way to bulk this up. Like this is really good for the three of us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right that egg noodles would be, would be good if we wanted to bulk this up more and feed, you know, have a couple more servings. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Egg noodles would taste really great with these, with these ingredients. It would cut the, the sodium from the canned potatoes. Yeah, that's true. But it was good. It's nice, spicy. Vaguely cheesy. Well, we're gonna go enjoy the rest of our dinner and I'll be back with y'all in a little bit for those cupcakes. My cupcakes are done, they're cooled. Uh, for frosting, I'm just using a very basic canned chocolate frosting. Even though I can make really delicious homemade frostings and I know how to make homemade cakes. This combination of yellow cake and chocolate frosting is actually one of my like absolute favorite. Like it's always been one of my favorite. But yeah, having haven't had you know sat and eaten a whole bowl full of that dinner and having time to like you know just like really process the the flavors and all. Uh, if I did it again, I would definitely trade out the potatoes, the canned potatoes, for egg noodles because I do think that the potatoes added a lot of extra sodium that it didn't really need. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't too salty to enjoy or anything like that. It's just more sodium than I'm used to in most of our dinners. But yeah, so I, I would definitely replace the, the, the canned potatoes with egg noodles. I think that is like a, that would have been an ideal ingredient. So if I ever made it again, I'd do that. And then I really liked the spiciness. It was a little on the spicy side for my mom. So, you know, if you're not as big a fan of spicy foods, then I think just going with like the classic, um, like, you know, the onion crisps, that would be the way to go. Andrew grabbed a, a cupcake already and he's uh, making noises of approval over here. So I guess- Got it, it when she wants to <laughs> So I guess it must be uh, good. I haven't tried one yet myself. It was very good. Good, good. Thank you for letting me sit one. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. These are all frosted. I've got just a little bit of frosting left. Andrew bashfully took one, but I have 18 cupcakes and there are three of us. He could have as many as he wants. Now it's my turn to try one of these. 
So I'm not a very big fan of the Palmer chocolates. It's just not very good quality chocolate to me. It's, I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's all right. Like I wouldn't sit and eat it, but baked into a cupcake. Yeah, that, uh, that chocolate peanut butter egg in there is really good. In terms of the Sprite and yellow cake mix combo, there's not really much of a noticeable difference than if I had used eggs and oil. I think there's a, a slight texture difference, but it's not very noticeable. And I can't even entirely be sure if I'm imagining that or not. I feel like I would need um, a cupcake made with eggs and oil next to one made with just a soda to really be able to say if there was a, you know, a real difference. But this is good. Mm. One cupcake was plenty for me tonight, but I definitely look forward to having one with my coffee tomorrow. And this glass of Sprite is the absolute perfect bubbly citrusy thing to pair with all this sweetness. Alrighty friends, I hope that you got some good inspiration or ideas or just enjoyed hanging out with me in my kitchen today. Have a wonderful, wonderful Easter and I will see y'all again soon.